Joe here, your reliability man, bridging the gap between best practices and the reality that you live in every day. Today's topic is the P to F curve. I mentioned this on a previous video. I, I had attached a link where there was a, a YouTube video on the topic, but I just really wasn't satisfied with it. So I've created this video, and this is really a high level look at the P to F curve. If you may say, you know, targeted for managers and plant managers. So share that. Uh, this video with them if you have the opportunity. Uh, PDF, potential for failure uh, curve. On this axis, the Y, we got resistance to failure. You know, okay, you want to be as high as you can on this. And this, we got time. So for example, let's say we have a pump running. Uh, we have a pump running, you know, at, at, at time zero here. And it just runs, 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 runs. Then all of a sudden, something happens to the pump. Say it's in the bearing, a defect, an anomaly gets into that bearing, and then it just starts to taper off, okay? That's really typically how things fail. Gets down here, and then there's a little starburst at that point, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna blow up this last section um, you know, of the chart. Blow this up and take a hard look at that. That's really what we want to learn from. Now, it's important that you look at, as time goes by, you know, we there's uh, organizations, and, and most of them, even, even the uh, top tier ones, they have inspections where they may look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it. But if you're talking about a pump and you're talking about a bearing, what do you actually look at? You know, you, you it's, you know, from a time-based maintenance, it's, it's, well, it's there, <laughs> it's rotating, so you're looking at it. So we look at uh, the best at applying technology to this, and if you're looking at the health of this bearing, you'd like to look at it at some interval with some technology that detects vibration, ultrasonics, uh, oil analysis, wh where you can uh, uh, really see what's happening inside of that piece of equipment, just like going to the doctor where they extract blood from you. So let's talk about blowing up this region over here. Okay, give me a second here. So let's say that uh, we're tracking along at this time and then an anomaly, some little pit on a bearing of just a in, you know, very small pit on a bearing appears at this point. And then it gradually goes down here to final failure. Well, you can detect that pit very early with ultrasonic emissions, okay? And then maybe a little bit later, you got vibe you can detect it with. And then a little bit later, it starts to generate some heat so you can detect it with IR. Okay, then a little bit later, you know, you, your oil analysis starts to, uh, you know, show something up. A little bit later, you could start to hear something, you know. Boy, that pump's making more noise than it used to. Then, you know, you can actually smell something. <laughs> Something's going on. It's cooking in there. Then you can see it. Maybe it's shaking, rattling, and rolling. Uh, and then finally, a, a failure occurs. Now, the problem with this curve and this shows it's you know very you know simple to see the progression and how long the time is from early detection till end and the problem is this could be this could be one minute you know one hour it could be one day it could be one month it could even be one year you really don't know you really and and, and people try to to maximize that. Hey, I found it with UE. I want to track that all the way through here. Dangerous game to play. Really, the best thing that I've seen is you find something on UE. You know, you, you keep monitoring that. You monitor if it gets a little worse. You look at maybe some, uh, some windows of time of here and here are routine outages, and you go in, you, you change out that bearing. Fix things very early. And here's why that's important. I'm going to put another line on this chart. And it's cost, 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 cost. You know, cost is actually very small down here when you got a UE problem and then it takes off here at final failure. Some people use that you have 10X the cost if you go to final failure uh, of what, if you would have just replaced that bearing in a planned way, you have the bearing on hand, the crafts understand what to do. It's during a planned time with production where you get out here, you know, the bearing locks up, it freezes up on the pump, right? So you have to replace the pump, 
you, uh, the whole, you may even have to replace the foundation because you've been beating it all to death. So you have to regrout it. And it happens on Christmas Day, so you have to play a lot more. And you have uh, customer order issues associated with that. So this can easily escalate. 10X is probably a low estimate. So you want to be working down here. And this is why your reliability engineers are so keen on pushing these technologies to find problems early. One, it's way down here on the cost curve, allows plenty of time for planning to efficiently and safely and with a high quality job do the work. Okay, that's the essence of the P to F curve. It's you wanna find problems early at the lowest cost. Another benefit to being up here on the P to F curve is problem solving. And you've heard me talk before about the real money in this reliability game is in the problem solving. Efficiency of work is great. Plan, kidding, and scheduling is great. Those get you started. But the problem solving, taking that mean time between failure, you know, from one year to 10 years is where the big money is. So imagine, first of all, you had final failure, you had a bearing that locked up on a pump, caught on fire, shook the foundation to the ground. How easy is it to, uh, to say what was the root cause of that? You're just restoring flow and you're guessing, okay? Now, if you find an anomaly up here, say with UE on that bearing, you're, how was that bearing stored? How was it installed? What was the condition of the oil that went into it? What's our loop program look like? You can actually get into what caused the problem when you're up here. So not, not only do you lower the cost here, you know, versus this 10X, which I, I you know, sometimes can be a 100X, but you enable problem solving. That's the engine that feeds reliability is working up here, problem solving, finding things early, having time. Great. It's really not that much more complicated than that. Okay, thank you. Um, that's uh, that's the P to F curve for managers. Um, you know, again, uh, I can help you on this journey. Please add a question to this um, in the you know text below has my email information. The uh, lean driven reliability task for the week is when you're in that planning meeting, when you're meeting with your maintenance and reliability staff recognize where you're at on this curve. You know, if the thing's shaking, rattling, and rolling and causing production issues, you're way down here. You're on thin ice. You're, you're, you're going to be spending a lot of money. Push the organization over here. And in that planning meeting, let's add resources to a UE find, to a vibe find, an IR find, and an oil find. Put your resources and money there because it has 10 times the effect of operating down here. Operating down here is unfortunately where a lot of people are, you know, hey, can you guarantee me this UE is going to fail, you know, 30 days later? No, I really don't know. But it's got a 10 to, 10 to 1 lever bar. That's how you get ahead of this reliability game. You play the odds of planned, kitted, staged jobs where you don't have final failure and collateral damage. Again, lean driven reliability. Let me know how I can help. You got my contact information below. Thank you. Bye.